What's up guys, it's Brian again from Lake Hickory Scuba Marine. I'm out here on our local lake doing a little bit of sonar training and I'm actually trying to find a new place to go dive and I want to take a few minutes here and talk about a subject that is very dear to me and that's about being a dive professional. And there's several attributes that you need to have if you're wanting to become a dive professional, whether it's a dive master, assistant instructor, or even an instructor. Um, and th these attributes are very, very important, not only um, for you as a professional, as far as how you present yourself to the student and things like that, but they're also uh, great attributes to have just to make your career in the dive industry a little bit more successful. So when we talk about a dive professional, what is a dive professional? A dive professional is basically anyone who holds a supervisory role in the scuba industry, whether you're a dive master, Master, assistant instructor, uh, an instructor, a specialty instructor, instructor trainer, a course director, whatever it is, if you hold a supervisory position where you're on the top of training as far as looking after students, you are a dive professional. And there's several different attributes you really need to have to become the ultimate dive professional. And what are those attributes? First of all, you need to act a role. You need to be a dive professional or act like a dive professional. You need to look like a dive professional. And of course, you need to be the dive professional. Always act a role. You know, make sure that you speak clearly when you're talking to clientele or customers or students. Make sure that you look the role. Make sure you dress appropriately when you're teaching courses make sure that you wear appropriate gear um, you know your store whoever you work for may require you to wear certain types of gear and, and that's okay that's part of being in the industry it's a uniform policy that a lot of stores have but if your gear is getting old it's getting ratted maybe it's bleached out from the chlorine because you've been in the pool get new gear it's okay who doesn't like getting new gear and then of course be that dive professional when you get out there promote safe diving practices in this industry and promote it to divers and non-divers alike and just be the dive professional i want to give you some tips and tricks now on things that have helped me over the years in the industry as far as securing a job how i got hired how i got to stay in the position and how i moved up the ranks so one of the things that i look for as a say an employer when a new dive professional wants to come to work for for me I look for those three attributes of course I look to see that you're acting like a dive professional that you look like a dive professional and that you are a dive professional a couple other things I want to look at is to see what your knowledge is now a lot of times we get um, misunderstanding as far as what a certification is and how you earn a certification a lot of people think that you just simply pay for the certification and you get it and that's not necessarily the case yes you got to pay for the training you got to go through the training but you actually have to earn that certification how do you earn it? Well, you pass all the academics, you pass all the confined water or pool training, and then of course you pass your training dives, check out dives, whatever it is you want to call it, and then of course you earn that certification. Well, the professional level courses are really no different. So once you've earned that certification and then you want to get hired at a store or a shop somewhere, you know, they may test to see what your diving knowledge is. Now, I want to be careful here because I don't want to say that you have to be a diving expert to get a job in the industry. You really don't. There's a lot of great dive professional out there that have a lot of great knowledge in one specific or particular area of diving and they may not have so much in another area you know if you look at a recreational instructor versus a technical instructor the technical instructor may know more about the tech side of it than he does the recreational and vice versa the recreational instructor may know more than in the record side versus the tech side you take a free diving instructor he's going to probably definitely know more about free diving than say the um, recreational instructor or the technical instructor and there's a lot of mermaid courses Courses and so forth and so on so you don't you don't necessarily have to be an expert across the broad spectrum of the dive industry but you do have to have a general knowledge of scuba physics diving physics free diving physics and things like that Boyle's law Henry's law Dalton's law Charles's law and Archimedes principle those five laws in physics are very important to all of us not as just divers but also as dive professionals so typically when a um, say some uh, a new employee comes in or whatnot or somebody a dive professional wants to get a job with us i test them on that i give them a diving physics knowledge test and it's usually just through ssi or patty or whatever agency uh, they're used to i'll administer a test and see what kind of knowledge they have another thing that really helps you secure a job is you know have that professional attitude always make sure that you're on time never um never leave a student um 
if you schedule a class, please make sure you show up on time. If we schedule an interview with you, please make sure you show up on time as well. Uh, one of the worst things possible is for you to schedule a course with a student and then of course never ever show up. And the reason that is so bad is because you represent more than just yourself as that dye professional. You represent the store that you work for, you represent the agency that you teach for, and to be honest, you represent all dye professionals. If a uh, client or a customer walks in the store and you don't act the role, look the role, and be the role, they're going to get a bad first impression about you. And when they do, you know what? They're going to think all dye professionals are like that. So make sure that you act, look, and be that dye professional. The last thing I want to talk about is always following standards. Now, depending on what training agency you teach for, follow those standards. Please don't ever, ever violate a standards. Those standards are there for multiple reasons. First and foremost, they are there for safety and, and really nothing else. They're there for not only your safety, but your student safety as well. And your student always comes first, even above you. Now, they're also there, of course, to give us a, a platform or a standard or a guideline. To, and it's not really a guideline. It is a standard that we must follow. But it gives us those rules of how we um, should be as a dye professional what we should teach, the order we should teach it, the skills that we should teach, and the way that we should teach it, and things like that. So always abide by standards. You know, if standard says you got to do this, then simply do it. It's not that hard to do. One of the things that one of my pet peeves is, is when an instructor does everything he's supposed to do, he or she, and then when it comes time to certify the student, they're slack on it. You know, that student paid their money, Okay, once again, that doesn't get the certification, but that gets them the training. That student worked very, very diligent and very hard to pass the academics, pass their confined water training, and pass their open water training. And all that's left is for that student to certify, or that instructor to certify that student. And, you know, most training agencies, I'll take SSI for example. SSI gives us seven days to process a certification for a student. So as long as they've met all financial um, obligations, as long as they've passed the academics, they have passed the confined water, and they can pass the uh, open water, once those standards have been met, then we must certify them. And SSI gives us seven days. That's a solid week to certify somebody. And if you go beyond that, you are outside of the training standards of your agency. And whatever your agency, your agency may be more or less than seven days. But you need to make sure that you abide by standards. They're there for safety. They're also there to give us a set of rules that we must to abide by so that we are professionals. Guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. Um, if being a dive professional is something that you're interested in, maybe you want to become a dive master, maybe you want to work your way all the way up to instructor or instructor trainer, make sure that you act the role, make sure you look the role, and always make sure that you be that role. Be that role model, be that dive professional. It'll help your students out, it'll help you as a professional, and it helps us all out in the industry because this is a professional industry. Guys, if you got any questions on what it takes to be a dive professional, please put it down in the comment section below and I'll try to answer your questions the best I can. If you like this video, simply smash that like button for me and definitely share it as well. As always, make sure you follow us on Instagram and Twitter, like us on Facebook, pin us on Pinterest, subscribe to us here on YouTube, and as always, guys, we appreciate your business. Guys, we really appreciate you watching our videos. If you liked it, make sure to give us a big thumbs up. If you're not a subscriber, simply hit that subscriber button for us and make sure you hit the little bell to turn on all notifications. If you want to see some other cool videos, make sure to click these links here. They could be scuba tips, they could be diving videos, search and recovery videos, or gear reviews. Once again, guys, we really appreciate it.